Hey everyone, how you doing? I wanted to do a couple of quick updates. I, for those of you who are also subscribers to Jeffrey Doherty's channel, the Gospel Truth Christian Whistleblower, I've gotten some texts from him. Um, as you know, he's in Clearwater. And we're going to do our Sunday morning show. Uh, I think we, I think I figured out my end. I know Jeff has got it on his, his end. And it looks like we're going to be able to do both our channels live at the same time tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to try to get on about 7 East uh, Coast time. Uh, no, let's see. 9 a.m. East Coast time. 7 a.m mountain west time so let's continue to send um the good energy out there um I often we'll talk more about this storm and the collective consciousness on that also yes uh i did take down the angelic wars with is mankind under attack it, it was very art i am contesting this with YouTube, the piece of footage was uh, deemed public domain, uh, is not uh, copyrighted material, and, but hey, I can um, work with it no matter what. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-record uh, just the, um, PowerPoint, the other uh, presentation material, and I'll leave a link <laughs> to the interview that the uh, Catholic priest did. And basically, it's something you really need to hear. Basically, just lays it out there. He says that hell is a made-up concept. It was from the very beginning of the Christian church, and in this case, the Roman Catholic church. Uh, the fear of the afterlife has always been a very strong motivator in any religion. And because death is unknown, I mean, I haven't talked to anyone that's been on the other side that I know of. Now, it may very well be that my aunt that visited me, you know, at the age of six, who had just died did she communicate to me from the other side i don't know i think she was still here she was in her true form i don't know but back to the point so if hell is a made up concept to merely to keep control he also says in that, uh, and it's a great clip, you know, he says, there's no need for anyone to be born again. He says, what is needed is for mankind to grow up, to take responsibility. Now, he also goes on to say that he honors his God through his traditions. And I think that's an honest individual. So we'll get into that a little bit more uh, on tomorrow's show. As you know, we're going through the Zephyr. I'm working on the second installment on that. And the shortest little piece of the entire um, book is turning out to be uh, quite fascinating. Folks, there is... Whether God, as you can see, God is, and you can check it out for yourself, God is a concept of the infinite being. Now, that's hard for a lot of people to internalize, that there is something above God, but there is. And... As odd as it seems, there very well appears that they have a lifespan. Wow. 
That's just something most people can't handle. But as we saw in the first installment of the Zephyr is the fact that there is one thing that is above God, but not equal to the infinite being. And that's will, self-will, what all of us possess. Okay, so think about this. If self-will is above God and equal to the infinite being, not greater. I always look at it like this. Here's the infinite being, and then here's will. Now, if this is how it would look visually, right? What then could you say will is? It would appear that it's very, very powerful. All right, so let's look at another word for will. I'll get my water. Hey, isn't that a great cup? Dickie's Barbecue, giving him a free plug. Um, they got the best baked potato casserole. Anyway, I digress. So if will is next to or unequal to the infinite being, being above God, because think about this. You were taught this all along in your religion. I was. I just never realized it. That if you take the garden parable, metaphor, allegory, what was it that the Adam really did? Violating of eating the fruit was not the sin never was. It was Adam's will that not even God could break or overcome or overpower. All right, let's continue to go with this. So that would tell us in instinctively and directly imply that will would be a very powerful, powerful force. Yeah. So think about this now. We're all working towards developing the collective consciousness of humanity. We talk about consciousness on an individual level. But how many of us really stop and think about maybe the most powerful thing that you and I possess? Maybe it's so powerful, in fact, that the unseen forces, unseen enemy, I don't know. You're going to find out in the um, program I'm going to po uh, post, the angelic uh, wars is mankind under attack. There is good evidence to show that that is exactly what's happening. But let's get back to Will. Now, in the second installment on the Zephyr, you're going to learn, we all learn, that when you combine will to the foundation, and we have to go back and look at what the foundation is, right? That covenant of unity. 
And then I'll be adding to this a book that I have just about finishing on how many other faiths look at this will and this power that permeates everything and how we begin to build upon that, that begins to help us understand and believe in you, yourself. Knowing that your faith, your will, and think about it, how it's, you know, the idioms throughout our speech about will. I can remember as a uh, teenager working at a uh, summer camp as a wrangler. And it always was something because how you broke a horse in is that you broke the horse's will. Now, I read a, wrote a few that <laughs> I got an FYI for you. They still kept that will. And we had one, um, just an absolutely beautiful chestnut uh, mare. And uh, when that horse decided to go to the barn, it wasn't going to stop her. She was gone, buddy and you are along for the ride. And when she got there, she was going to do her best to knock you off her back because she knew how to get into that barn where the food was at. So will, the will of the people. How many times have we heard that? Politicians love to uh, tout that. The will of the people. What is that saying? Is it saying that we, the people, collectively, maybe collective consciousness has been right in front of us all along. We've just misused it. And we've let the elite few who knew how to use it and channel it, lord it over us, steal us blind. Mm hmm. Wouldn't it be something if every politician hearing my voice began to realize that guess what? You break your promise, you're going to learn the will of the people. Because if will is force, thought is measurable power. Faith can move mountains. If we begin to add all of this together, we could will you out of office more than just what you think through voting at the ballot. Amazing what collective consciousness can do with evil, how it can become surrounded with an invisible force that's powered by our faith, our will our collective consciousness. Think about that. Might make every politician a statesman. Ooh, wow! That alone would advance mankind by a thousand years. But seriously, back to the point. So that's what all of these next couple of programs will actually entail. Because the thing about it is, no one's going to give us the manual. No one's going to say, here's how it's done. Here's what's been done to you. And this is what it's going to take to get it corrected. No one's done that. At least no one I have found. And then all of us individually, you know, I. I've run out of 
shelves because of books. Now, and I'm just one individual, I'm a layman. But wouldn't it be something, as this morning's program was talking about, that maybe that's, I just thought about this, maybe that is in fact the difference between humanity and the animal kingdom, and I guess to the very extent the plant kingdom as well, is that because of where we're supposed to be at, consciously wise, <clears throat> we're not there yet, that they get their species collective consciousness because they need that, as does the plant kingdom. And as you'll find in the angelic wars, which are really nothing more than the alien wars. So again, it's a warp perspective we've done. Because of the damage done for the last 2,000 years, Folks, most of humanity is still locked into some freaking, you know, think about the movie Alien. You got this thing sucking your brain because of what they have taught us, as they said, was truth. No truth to it at all. It's an illusion. And this is what the program proves. It is an illusion. Because again, full circle. Will, right? If you have the will, the thought, and the belief, nothing will stand in your way. Nothing. The problem is, and I'll just tell it like it is, we start too big. And when we fail at it, or what we perceive to fail at, because technically you won't fail. It's just a matter of perspective of your expectation to your perception. Now, perception says, I can move mountains with my faith. The expectation is, is that, well, it's been two weeks. I haven't seen no mountain move. You know, and that then is the death of what you have just been putting your energy into. And how you learn and how it should be taught, and that's what I'm attempting to do here. We got up to 23, by the way, of the uh, core 100, that we have to start small. Listen, if you're believing for financial flow, increase, and you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But if you've never believed for a dollar, well, I can tell you, don't try to be believing for 5,000 or 10,000. You're going to fail. I'm just going to be honest with you. You're going to fail. But if you start by believing for a dollar, when that dollar manifests itself, then you have the ability to say, oh, well, now I, I know I can believe for a dollar. Let me try five. And that's how it works. Now, the cool thing is, there are other things you can do to add to that belief, that faith that will, that thought. And then how it works collectively, all of us together, and when we learn those fundamentals that I'm teaching right now, well, that's where things begin to happen. That's when you can actually get a picture of someone and we'll circulate the picture and we're gonna have a specific need. And that's what it'll have to be, a specific need. And it's going to have to be, because what we have to do is form it up here, 
and then see it birthed here. And that's why, for instance, and I'm just putting a, for instance, I don't know anything to this, but let's say if a person has a health issue and this health issue, well, we need to know more specifically, could be a heart. Okay. Listen, you don't think that the body has the ability to generate new heart cells? They can do it in the lab. Take your stem cells, yours, and grow new heart tissue, new heart muscle. They can actually grow a heart. It's not that far-fetched anymore. And what happens to us internally when I tell you those medical breakthroughs? And do your own research. You'll find it. Stem cell... Um, as a science, as a medical tool, it's going to revolutionize medicine. Probably within 100 years, most people will live 5, 100, 1,000. We'll understand in breaking the genetic code and how to regenerate every part of us. That's where it's heading. So now, with that knowledge, when we come together and we see the picture of the person, we know specifically what it is that they're looking for. Well, we can all say, well, what we're looking for is the regeneration of cells. That's not that far-fetched. Now, you have to be honest with yourself. If you say, well, I can't specifically visualize that, well, then what would be the closest thing to that? that the person would find the next time they go to the doctor, that there's vast improvement in cardiac function all the way around? Could you latch onto that? Well, sure. And that's how we bring everyone up at the same time. We're all dealing with the reconstruction of our cores. Some are more advanced in other areas, but no one's got it all figured out yet. But by locking arms together, we'll learn. And there's masters that I know listen to my channel. And they're watching. And I believe as we collectively begin to show them that what we can do, and again, Wisdom says to start small. In fact, I can quote you the exact proverb. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. Again, is not the smallest the Lord over the biggest? I mean, it's there. Okay, uh, tomorrow morning, Jeffrey Doherty, the Christian whistleblower, we're going to be that this is not your normal Sunday show program. I believe we'll have both channels live and look forward to a good discussion and continue to grow. Every waking moment and sleeping moment that you are in this plane of existence is an opportunity to grow. And you can have fun doing it. You really can. There's so much that you can learn, as I think many of you are already finding. That a simple walk down the street, you see new meaning. You see the fabric of how life flows. Many of you can see it in the heavens. You see it in the clouds. You see the manifestation of other beings. This is, this is all part of what they have kept from us. But yet, the very thing that they have tried to keep from us is the very stuff written in their works. They just put it in a different context. You see how it's just 
I mean, once the, uh, I can remember going to my aunt's house. This was back in the um, 60s. And she had one of those clocks, you know, that had the uh, glass case that went around it and it went this way. I know some of you know what I'm talking about. And it would do the chime. Well, what they've tried to keep from us is understanding what the mechanism is. And so they put this glass shield around it. Allows us to see it, but never touch it. Because again, anytime you're looking through glass, unless you're looking directly at something, you're looking it through a filter. And even a clear glass has distortion. All right, folks, have a great evening. Be kind to one another. Be kind to Mother Earth. I know I say that, but look at what's happening now to our friends and in Florida. And you got Jose coming up right behind, taking up the rear. This storm, they said that they, they cannot, it'll take them months to rewrite the record books of what this storm has done. This storm has formed its own biosystem. That's how powerful it is. Unprecedented. I'd like to add this. I believe the earth is in fact tilting. Now, can we get to the satellite imagery of that? I don't know. So often, you know, the magicians over at NASA, and they are, they're magicians. Listen, where do you think mathematics came from? Think about that. Mathematics is as much magic as abracadabra. And go and look up the real meaning of abracadabra. I just spoke a spell over you. You do it all your time yourself. Why, we're just a bunch of spelled, you know, speakers. We just casting out spells all the time. And we are. That's why it's important that you don't, that you control the tongue, bridle it, because you don't want those curses. It's, it's all a boomerang. And if you, actually, I think it says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Whoa! Now we see where a lot of that comes from. All right, folks, we'll talk tomorrow morning. Be kind to yourselves and have a good evening.